Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we're here to shoot another video on the this time the M13 core set. Um, this is a really neat video, really neat set because this is really the first time that Magic's ever brought back uh, Legends. Um, haven't seen those since M10 since 10th edition. Uh, I believe that was the only other set that had them in there. So, yeah. um, this set was originally released back in uh, July 13th in 2012. This is the only set where you get a multicolored card. The card is Nicol Bolas Planeswalker. And it's really kind of major, uh, majorly just for the flavor of the set. Um, other thing, the things we're going to be playing in this set, we got laid out here for you. We're going to be playing each of the pre-constructed decks. Now each of these decks is two colored and feature, features a legend uh, to match its two colors. So for example, in the green one, or I'm sorry, the this is the white one here. This is Audric, Master Technician. It's the blue-white deck. We've got the blue-red deck is for Talrand. The white-black deck is for the Farox. Uh, the red deck is for uh, Krenko Mob Boss, and the green deck is for Yeva. Um, you can, we'll have basic information for this all up in the comments section so you can read up on that. We're also going to be playing with the two event decks. Um, those are a little bit stronger decks built uh, to play at FNM's more competitive level events. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive. The MSRP on the standard pre-cons is usually around $12 or $13. And the MSRP on the pre-con the, the the event decks is going to be closer to $20. Yeah, the beautiful thing about M13 is the more we look, the more we found. There really is something for everybody. And uh, obviously at the point that we post this video, this is still very current. This is something that you can probably go to your local gaming store and find. Uh, I was very pleased with the variety. So uh, some of this I have played, some of it I have not. But of course, we will be featuring videos in which we are playing with everything that you see here. So hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, you know, you can get a good good view of everything that's here even before you purchase it then. Yeah, they had so much stuff for the set. Even as we sat down, we didn't even know this existed. This is a, uh, a booster battle pack, it says. We, we haven't opened this up, one of these up yet. Take a look at it. Uh, it says in the back it features two 20-card semi-randomized decks, two 15-card uh, booster packs, and uh, some, some basic inserts. So that's going to be neat to play with. Uh, it looks like a, a really weaker, smaller dual decks built in. Uh, and that ran, uh, ran us here around uh, 10 to 12 dollars. Um, we've also got our booster packs for the booster wars, so we'll go ahead and get to the opening now here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch the camera so we can view that. All right, let's go ahead and open up some decks here. Um, we'll start off with these, uh, the pre-cons that are two-colored. Um, neat thing is these actually say they include two booster packs, so that'll be fun. Um, I was curious how they uh, how they could build so much so much into the deck. So grab one of your shelf there. All right, this one looks good. Now, as we said, these each include a legend. The neat thing is they're all foil legends. Um, so this one here has a foil Yava Nature's Herald. Yep. And as you can tell, see right there on the front what you're what you're getting as far as that card goes. Mm -hmm. Two booster packs here. Now the thing we're going to do with these because we already have booster packs for pack wars, we're actually going to be using these to. Um, um, we're actually going to be using these to uh, sell, uh, trade up to other packs on the web because there's going to be a lot of other packs that we're going to need, so these are going to be up as collateral. We can trade for other things. Yeah, once we hit revised. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and open them up. Yep. Alright. Okay. Alright, so here's the decks. This one features Yeva, four Arbor Elves, great for ramp. Yeva itself uh, is nice because it has flash and it gives all of your green creatures flash. Um, Recluse is a great blocker, it's a 1 2 death touch reach. Um, Centaur is a generic 3 3 for 3. Uh, and it looks like it's got a lot, of, a lot of basic green action here. This is stuff you typically see in a green deck, so it's really not that strange to it. Um, now we're getting into some of the black cards here. <clears throat> a lot of these are uh, Prey Pond and Rancor is a huge one. Um, naturalize um, Ranger's Path to ramp up to the the lands you need. Uh, I think black is what uh, what holds a lot of the removal removal for the deck because green doesn't run much removal itself. Okay, and here we have our white legend. 
and it's Odric. And then we have uh, some good artifacts. And then uh, I see a lot of basic creatures and creatures with a lifelink. We have uh, three silver coat lions, and then some uh, Ajani Sun Striker. Um, and uh, I've, I'm a big fan of the Attended Knight. I've always liked the good white creatures. White's my favorite color, by the way. And then uh, we have uh, the Crusader of Odric. Okay, there we go. Let's see a little better. <laughs> Uh, we have the uh, Arctic Avon, two of those. Well, I've played that in a limited environment, and Arctic Avon is actually much, much more powerful than people give it credit for. Uh, a 3 2 flyer for three mana is really good, especially when you have the option of giving that creature life link. Mm -hmm. Really powerful. And let's see. we have uh, the. Hang on, I'm probably going to mispronounce it. We have the. Uh, Provocateur. The. the Courtly provocateur, and uh, she provocates things. Yes, <laughs> pretty pretty good uncommon, and uh, it, you know you can never underestimate how good it is to actually have some flying creatures. So uh, the we have the Griffin here, and then we have uh, two Healer of the Pride, and then we have the uh, Battle Flight Eagle, which really helped in uh, draft the other night. So I'm, I'm glad to see that card again. And uh, fairy invaders, uh, Sarah Angel, and uh, she, she's they, classic, right? And they never can make up their mind. This time she's an uncommon. And uh, our rare here is Captain of the Watch. And then we have uh, mostly basic lands, but we have we have evolving wilds, plenty of planes. I'm not exactly sure how many. And then of course islands. And then we have uh, a Ring of Thune, Glorious Charge, Downpour, Oblivion Ring, certainly one of the best cards they put in M13. Safe Passage, again, I really like playing that card in draft. Captain's Call, two of them to be exact. Uh, and two Divine Verd Verdicts, and finally a Tricks of the Trade. Now, before we go too far, I'm just curious, the, uh, what is, the is this all M13? So, yeah, it's all M13. Yep, every single card is M13. So meanwhile, while he's stacking that out, I'll go ahead and open up the next one. This is the red deck fe featuring Krenko Mob Boss. And the nice thing is these all really do play off of the uh, the rare the, the rare legends, um, his ability. So Krenko Mob Boss, for example, here, he's... The last one we looked at, Audric, featured a lot of little small cre little creatures that can, uh, if you got a bunch out, uh, if your opponent's got a couple big creatures, you may figure you'll be behind, but Audric really, really does help swing games, because once he's out, you can swing in with a whole board full of guys, decide which of your opponent's creatures are even going to try and block, you'll obviously put them behind the big one, their little creatures behind your big creatures, or just totally swing in for damage and decide no blockers, so it's, it's really uh, advantageous. This one here is the um, the red green deck for uh, goblins. We've got Krenko Mob Boss. He's the uh, the foil general, as it were. Uh, also got some basic goblins. They're great with Krenko because uh, he loves making copies of them. A couple hatchlings, log flunkies. He's an old school goblin. Glad to see him come back. Yeah, me too. Uh, Torch fiend, not a goblin, but has his utility. Flint and Hoofbore, and like I said, these uh, these creatures that get better if you have a, something of a different color. So this is a green one, it says if you have a mountain, it gets plus one, plus one. It's a two cost, so essentially it would just be a three, three if you have mountain for two mana. Uh, it also can give itself haste, so essentially you can spend three mana for a three, three haste, which isn't too bad in this environment. Um, Reckless Brutes, we've got an arms dealer. Got a bunch of different goblin options in here couple different flying options because normally red and green have problems with the flyers so it's nice to see them include something that can deal with it. Alright, basic lands. We've got Kindled Fury, Ring of Valkus. A couple Krenko's Commanders are nice to put out copies of tokens. Titanic Growths. Fervors are really great. It'd be great if it were uh, uh, Goblin Chieftain but I think that'd be, it'd be asking a lot to add uh, add that many rares to the deck, but Fervor kind of fills in the spot and will stay legal past rotation because uh, Goblin Chieftain was only in M12, not in M13. 
Uh, Flames of the Firebrand, good kill spell. Trumpet Blast, good for uh, an Alpha Swing. Serpent's Growth, Chandra's Fury, Cleaver Riot, Volcanic Geyser. So, really a lot more removal. A few smaller creatures, but they don't run as many creatures and not usually as powerful. But they run a lot more removal and uh, usually a lot, uh, a lot bigger creatures thanks to the green. Okay, and now on to this one. We have, this is red-blue, and our, our main card is a foil Talrin. And then, uh, so I mean, uh, I'm already liking the fact we got a fish deck here. And now we have some Kraken Hatchlings. Um, the Augur Bolas, uh, that's a very good uncommon. And Fog Bank, I, mean, I, I remember playing with that card quite a bit back in the day. Uh, Two scroll thieves. Uh, surprised to see Wind Drake back. And Archaeomancer. I don't. I honestly don't remember playing that card. Um, now Mind Claw Shaman. So there we go. We have a nice blue red. I mean, it's good to see that they're uh, actually doing it so that we have cards that are supposed to be enemies, and uh, they've got them working pretty seamlessly here. Uh, and then an a Harbor Servant and a Stormtide Leviathan. And then uh, here we go, we have some Evolving Winds again. And then we have plenty of basic land, of course. We have some islands, and then some mountains. And then we have an Elixir of Immortality, a Hydro Surge, Unsummon, glad to see that card back. Um, Smelt, which is the new Shatter that costs one instead of one and one colorless. And then we have Rain of Evos Isle, uh, an Essence Scatter, Negate, Searing Spear, actually three of them, and then a two Divination, uh, only one Rewind, I wish there was two or three in there, uh, Sleep, Talrin's Invocation, two of them, and then Switcheroo, Gotta love that card name. Crazy name. Yeah. It's like one of those things that you think, would Wizards make it a card called Switcheroo? Yeah. Sure, why not? Sure. <laughs> and it's not in Unglued or Unhinged. Someday they're going to run out of card names and they're going right. to have to use it anyway. Right. And then finally we have a turn to slag. So that looks like a pretty promising deck. Other one we've got here. This is the black deck. This is your... Legend is Nefarox, Overlord of Grixis. He's a six cost five five flying, which is good math by itself, but he also is exalted and whenever he attacks alone defending the player sacrifices the creature. So he is removal. He's a big beast himself, and if he doesn't attack, his exalted can be uh, can be uh, something to deal with too. Other creatures he features, uh, due to bound dead, another exalted creature. Tormented Soul loves getting the exalted bonus as being because he's unblockable. Warclamp Mastiff. Now, why they reprinted Warclamp Mastiff? Why they printed him as a one-one hound with first strike as opposed to just reprinting? Um, uh, one-one for one-one for strike for one. Um, yeah. I don't know. Well, there's another corset creature with a one-one first strike for one. Yeah. Um, Knight of Infamy, another exalted creature. Uh, walking corpse. Uh, Avon Squire, another exalted creature. This one flies. Knight of Glory, another exalted creature. Uh, Servant of Nephrox, another exalted creature. Guardians of a Cross, another exalted creature. Uh, Vampire Nighthawk is nice because uh, the lifelink can really, really be relevant with the, uh, the exalted bonus. Um, we've got Bloodhunter Bat, relevant enter the battlefield trigger in a, in a limited environment. Um, another exalted creature here with Dust Mantle Prowler. Liliana Shade and Bellborn Ghoul. Um, now, strange thing is, I've seen a uh, combo with Bellborn Ghoul recently, featuring the uh, the new Sphinx of the Chimes from Return to Ravnica. But, uh, that seems real left field for a standard deck, but it'd be interesting if that pops up as something playable. Um, Zombie Goliath. Uh, the second rare would be Xanthrid Gorgon, a three-six Death Touch, who uh, basically is removal by herself, sitting around on the board. Got an Evolving Wild, just like all the other decks. Get our basic lands out of the way. We've got Ring of Zathrid, 
which is uh, pretty much the same ring as all the others. Each of them has a, an ability relevant to the colors it is. Uh, pacifism is great old school removal. You've got Cower and Fear, Murder is more great removal. Blood Reckoning, very nice card in, uh, in a limited environment. Uh, Mark of the Vampire and Angelic Benediction. Another Exalted, this one uh, an enchantment, but also has a relevant trigger. So uh, I'm thinking I'm, this is going to be a lot of fun to play these decks against each other. That one looks like my favorite so far. <laughs> I've always liked black and white together, and that one looks really promising. This one looks disgustingly overpowered. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm actually wondering why they printed that one there. Yeah, that one seems to stand out amongst the, the uh, others. We'll go ahead and open up this one here. Um, we'll, we'll just open up one of these here so we can get a... Uh, okay. Because the other one will contain much the same information. Uh, exactly. We'll see them play out against each other in the, the main video. <laughs> I kind of didn't have access to an unopened. Uh, the decks we have are the colors are we've got a green, white, black, and we've got a red, blue deck. We didn't have access to a, a green, white, black one here in the store, so we had to borrow somebody's deck box just to show what it looks like. Uh, he's made some modifications to the deck, so we can't really play that one yet. Uh, but we'll have that video up in time with all the others. Uh, nice thing is these come with a little sleeve around them and a decorative box. Doesn't look like this would take a whole lot of abuse, but it'd be neat to play with. Um, oh, and we got things. Yep. Inside, you've got an area for your deck, and you've got a little area you can put your dice and uh, other play materials in there. This is the spin down. I like this. It's also down. got a divider so you can separate your sideboard and your main deck. We've got our fold out posters here. This one, the name of the deck is Sweet Revenge. This poster's got just got some basic information on it. It's got the uh, the, the deck list, uh, an explanation of what, what some of the abilities you're going to be looking for and the best way to play this deck, uh, how it's designed to be played. The other insert here. This is... Strangely more difficult to open than it should be. <laughs> it looks like a lot of the same information. This has also got some advertisement for their uh, Duel of the Planeswalkers game that's accessible on Steam and all the, the current gaming consoles, so you can download and play that. Uh, it's also got some basic explanations about how to play the game itself. So, we've got those. Cannot handle these things for some reason. All right, and we've got some weird packs. Let's go ahead and open up this one here. This is the actual deck itself. I think the other one is just uh, generic playable things that would go in the deck. Oh, I already like the look of this. Now, this deck is standard legal as of the release of M13. So, if the new set M14 has come out by the time uh, you watch this video, a lot of the stuff isn't going to be legal much longer. Um, and probably and isn't legal right now. So, uh, at, as of the release of M13, Slagstorm, Red Sun, Zenith, these things that are here on the bottom, these are all legal. But these are not going to be legal here coming up soon. Um, at the at, at the time of this release, at this video, they will not be legal because Slagstorm and Red Sun, Zenith were both out of these cards and were in the block. So those are not going to be standard legal. Uh, basic cards we've got here. We've got Armored Scab. Uh, not sure how relevant the ability will be, but it's a so 1-4 for 3 mana, Better Geist. Obviously I haven't really peeked through this deck so I couldn't say uh, the way, look at how it's built. So I couldn't really comment too much on uh, how well it's going to play. Firewing Phoenix, it's always great to have a creature comes back. Dark Slick Shores, um, dual lands are very nice. We've got uh, Desolate Lighthouse, 4 Evolving Wilds, which is always great. Uh, Sulphur Falls, we've got a plethora of basic lands here. Silent Departure. We've got four Faithless Lootings. Those are really nice. We've got two Geist Flame. Two Pillar of Flame. Four Think Twice. We've got four Desperate Ravings. Three Forbidden Alchemy. Ah, I see what this is. This is a Burning Vengeance deck. 
the whole point is to get as much stuff in your gra in your graveyard as you can, and a lot of stuff has flashback or the ability to be cast from your graveyard. So Burning Vengeance says whenever you cast a spell from the graveyard, it deals two damage to target creature or player. Uh, and it's full of spells with flashback. Slagstorm's great because it's just a board wipe, and Red Sun Zenith is nice because it removes something and if and it shuffles itself back into the back in the library. And then the other cards that were in the cellophane, we have uh, four Screeching Scabs, uh, two Arc Trails, two Blood Craze, uh, I'm sorry, four Blood Craze and Uni, uh, and let's see, two Dismembers, uh, and three Secrets of the Dead. That looks like we've got four, we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, so we've got 4, 4, and 5, it's a looks like a sideboard to me, yep. and it all seems to be uh, pretty well suited to other options. So these really do seem like decent decks, so these, these will be fun to play with. I think if you're going to play with a, play at a, uh, an F&M, um, your best option is to get one of the event decks. Obviously, uh, as of this video, the event deck for M13 is not going to be legal as a standard environment deck, so you want to get that... Um, you want to get the event deck current to the environment. Um, and let's go ahead and put this in here. Cut the video at this point. Okay. There's that. Alright, we got all this stuff here. here Alright, so what's the last thing we need to do then? I was going to open up the, uh, the dual. Yeah. Okay. Almost done, Dan. Okay. Almost done. Alright. Now we're going to take a look see what we got here. Right on. Here, let's just cut it right down the middle here. Okay. The new Walmart special knife. <laughs> Shaved it. Oh, all right. Looks like uh, I trimmed... Oh, they're, they're stuck together. That's really kind of weird. Hmm. I've never seen that before. Security strip. So here we have a booster pack, some fold out information on M13. And then, not sure what we have here other than an attended night on the top. Looks like you got a lot of the same information on the first yeah. stuff over there, too. So, on one half here, we have an Attended Knight, a War, War Falcon, an Angel's Mercy, Glorious Charge, Crusader of Podrick, and let's see, some planes, and then we have some red cards here, a Blade Tusk Boar, Trumpet Blast, Volcanic Strength, Krenko's Command, Arms Dealer, and then some basic land. Now, on this side we've got Centaur Corsier. Uh, a Vastwood Gorger, Bond Beetle, Fog. I love that card more than I should. It's really not a good card, but I love to play it. Um, Brooks Pack Leader, got some lands, Servant of Neferox, Crippling Blight, Dark Favor, Tormented Soul, and Dust Mantle Prowler. Now we're going to do something a little bit different with these because these are designed to be played with these cards and the, uh, the packs. We're going to open up the packs and we're going to take the cards appropriate to the color and put them in the decks here. All right. So, take out the insert. My pack here. Get a basic land. I'll be using that. This deck was green-black, so I will be grabbing green cards and black cards. Are no black cards. All right. But my green cards I'll be using will be Titanic Growth, very nice. Prey Upon, which is a great removal of an op removal option, and Serpent's Gift, which also is not bad with Prey Upon. Now, now with mine, uh, I'm looking for the red and the white appropriate cards, so we will not be playing that. But I have a Rummaging Goblin. Uh, not playing that fog. Yep, fog will be going in here. Yeah, and uh, so I have a Silver Coat Lion. A war, war Clamp Maze Diff Index, Battleflight Eagle, Bond Beetle, Divine Verdict, 
auger of bolus, <laughs> harbor bandit, there you go, revive, hey, that's always useful. a wit's end, yep, and then a cat token, another mountain, and then Ooh. I got a foil rare, which is a hellion crucible. That's relevant in this format. Uh, cards I will not be playing. There's Negate. Here are your, your cards you can play with out of mine. Okay. You'll have a Kindled Fury, a Chandra's Fury, a Turn to Slag, a Goblin Arsonist, a Divine Verdict, a Battleflight Eagle. I will not be playing with the Arctic Haven. A Healer of the Pride, Cleaver Riot, and a Faith Reward. It's quite a bit of stuff. And yep. And by the way, Wits End has a wonderful misprint. It's uh, some misspelling on it, so you might want to check that out. Yep. Somebody, uh, somebody at Wizards dropped the ball when they sent the uh, the text to be put on the cards. Yep. So, so uh, that's it, so. and we can play these and see how things go. We'll we'll be doing the, all of this in an upcoming video. This is a plenty of material, and will take us quite a bit of time. But. Yep. We'll be doing this. This will be at least two weeks of videos here. So. Right. So there's a lot of good M13 stuff, and uh, expect to see more of us. Yeah. We'll see you all soon. We'll see you all soon. Have a good one.